Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pea Brain Show. Roll up, roll up. It's the Pea Brain Show, so it must be Monday fun day. And that's because we're going to have our normal joke section, and many other topics, something for everybody. Today, we've got such things as gardening. We've got tips about how to use herbs today. We have ideas for things to do. We have a little bit of Greek language for you, how to say your vegetables in Greek and amaze everybody. And we have much more besides, including our slot of what we want to watch maybe for our coffee break or our tea break. So look out for that. And I will add that afterwards in the links below. So let's get the ball rolling and start with our very first section. Today's first section, we're going to start with to do new to you. And this is something that you might not already be doing. It gives you an idea of what to do. And I thought I would talk today about herbs whether you already grow herbs or maybe there's a herb you don't yet grow that you could add to your herb collection. And I always find the thing with herbs is if you grow them, a lot of people put off not growing them like myself because some of them, you might not know what to do with them. So I've been looking up some different herbs and what you actually can do with them. If you've got any other ideas, add them either now in the live chat or in the comments below. If you've got good, easy ways of using herbs to encourage others to grow them because they might not know what to do with them. So I'm going to start with dill and parsley roots. Um, you don't need to grow them as deep as rosemary and Oregon. So that was something I found quite interesting. So I did write that down as well. OK, so basil. Now, basil, um, using dishes like spaghetti, it's easy to grow well. So that's one that I would say to grow first if you're new to growing herbs. It needs full sun and a well-drained pot. Um, keep removing the flowers to encourage it to keep growing or it will lose its flavour and die. So that's something to look out for when you're growing basil. So I hope that's a helpful tip. I've just got to write down um, that I need to add the link to something later on because I did forget to add the link before I started. So... That's what I'm writing down, why it's on my mind. Okay, dill. Dill is another beginner one. Easy to grow. That likes full sun and does well in all types of soil. Oregano or oregano. Um, it's drought tolerant. So that would be a good one for me to start with for sure. No need to fertilize. and as I say, an easy herb to begin with. And we have Drunken Chef barbecue in the house. So I would like you to put what herbs you would suggest for first time growers to start with and how you would use and which herbs or what mix of herbs you would recommend. Um, something I do grow, I'll talk about it in a minute, is chives, needs full sun, from rich soil. The purple flowers are also ed edible, particularly in things like salads. Now, I was talking to one of my YouTube friends the other day saying the first, um, the first chives I ever grew grew really well and just came up no problem. And I grew those first because they're easy to grow, are they not? And quick. Since then, I've done lots of other different types of chive seeds and not a single one has shown. So I was asking her about, well, why is this? What am I doing wrong? Why did one not grow and now nothing else has grown? And she suggests that this can be problematic and she suggests saving the seeds from the ones that have grown 
and they're more likely to definitely grow again. And I have actually been saving the seeds and I've filmed it. I've got video coming out soon. My easy way of saving every single seed from the chives. So look out for that. That is coming up soon. So I'm a bit two way on whether chives is an easy one to grow or not. First time. Yeah, really simple, really easy. And they were great since then. Not for me, which really is a good thing that I always say if something doesn't work for you, try again. Do try again or try a different space, a different area, a different way. I believe they like shallow pots. And the first pot I grew in was actually like a little wooden square. And I wasn't actually sure they were growing there because they wouldn't absorb the water enough because the wood would absorb it. So try, try again. Do not give up on anything. I had it in reverse first lot fine, but after that, not so good. Um, mint. I grow mint. There's many different types of mint, as you know. There's peppermint as well, spearmint. There's a chocolate mint. I've not tried that. I don't know if I'd like that or not. Um, how do you all use your mint? I make mint sauce for Mike. I don't like mint sauce, but that's the way I use my mint. Uh, mint rapid growth for sure. <laughs> um, orange mint, peppermint, no ones I didn't say. Likes full sun and a bit of shade. Needs well-drained soil. Um, with my mint, because I'm in a very hot climate, I actually have to keep it moist. I mustn't let it dry out. So that's my recommendation for the mint. And mint will take over very quickly. It will take over an area. So either grow it in a pot or in an area where you don't mind if it goes on the rampage, basically. And do pick the leaves from the very bottom first because they're obviously the ones that you need to pick first rather than from the top. Any plant, pick from the bottom and work up. Hi, Ashley. How are you? Uh, I like polo mints. <laughs> Does everyone know what polo mints are? Oh, dear. Yeah. Is that when you're on your horse? <laughs> polo mints. Playing polo. Uh, <laughs> they still have those. They, they used to be 2p, a packet. What are they now? What are they now, Ashley? How much are polo mints now? They used to be 2p. <laughs> Um, Rosemary, I hope you're all hitting that thumbs up, guys. <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to make it today, so hit that thumbs up. Um, Rosemary, fragrant, fragrant herb, full sun, needs well-drained soil, lasts a long time, whereas other herbs die after a season. So I haven't grown that. There's wild rosemary here. I'm assuming it's rosemary. I asked the locals what it is, and they just call it something that doesn't translate. But I'm pretty sure it, it's what I would think rosemary is. So maybe I have to go out and film that at some point, and then you can all tell me. I go, what's this? What's this? What's this? Um, they still sell polo mints. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas everything in England, the products have reduced in size. Um, anyway, it doesn't know polo mint is a white round circle with a hole in it that's polo mint i wonder if there if the holes got bigger <laughs> as in they're really small anyway so that would be a laugh it's a very thin circle now <laughs> um sage full sun well-drained sandy soil um not uh, don't fertilize as it spoils the taste and grow in full sun. I said grow in full sun. Hello, painting with squirrels. How are you? Glitter bombs to you, my dear. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, guys, go and check out her channel. Um, summer savory. Now, I don't know a lot about this. Uh, grows quickly, which sparked my interest of that. And the soil... Um, it needs full sun and a well-drained soil. Anything that needs full sun and a drained soil suits me. So anyone 
can tell me anything more of that, I'd be very pleased uh, to know, know about that. Uh, lavender. That doesn't grow here very well. I've tried so many times, and I'm not someone who likes to buy in starters, but we did actually buy some tiny starter plants because it's good for bugs. And no, no, didn't like it at all here. It's far too sunny. <laughs> uh, but lavender, well-drained soil. Soil likes um, a little high in alkaline. Trim the herb back to make it grow more. Now, I would like to share with you, there was a program in the 60s and 70s, a children's program in England. If you go on YouTube, you can probably find, yes, you can find it, it's there. And it was a program called The Herbs, and it was all puppets, and they lived in the herb garden. Some of them were animals, some of them were people, but looking like the herbs so for example i'm sure ashley can help me with some here there was sage who was an owl that was made up of sage leaves there was lady rosemary and she was married to sir basil there was dill the dog the main character was Parsley, the lion, and his mane was Parsley. There was Mr. and Mrs. Onion, and they were, well, he was the schoolmaster, and the chives were the school children, and there were a few more characters that weren't in it very much, and some very rarely. Um, oh, there was Bailey the gardener he was always in it so check it out and each herb had their song so there is a video with all the songs joined together i should have done a link on that actually that would have been quite fun okay see you ashley um so that's quite good go go on that it's good and it was to teach children different herbs so i like things like that so, um, yeah, I'll put add to herbs as well, if I remember afterwards. Um, I'll put that in after. It's just right to add that in the link after. What else I'm going to get? Okay. So, the next section I want to do today is so grow, mow, and ho, ho, ho. So gardening section today. And I wanted to do, as you probably know my channel, I'm more about recycling, salvaging, living on a budget, frugal buys, all that kind of thing. So I've written down a few ideas of salvage things you can find and use in your garden. Now, one of the things, if it's available for you to find or buy cheaply, some of you are lucky enough to have garage sales in your country. That is a fabulous place. Some of you may have um, secondhand shops or charity shops. You can find things. Some of you, like me, just find things on the roadside, salvage. We do have an auction site here, which we start low bidding, but if it gets higher we don't bid and we also have like some of you have craigslist and social media marketplaces that kind of thing we have a place online called bazaraki small bazaar and you can get there's a free section on that where you can pick things up so look out for these things if you're interested in my ways that you could reuse them or repurpose them and this is all for the garden, useful in the garden. So look out for wagon wheels, any wheels that have the divisions, the crisscrossing and the circle of the wheel. And this would be linked to my last bit I just did, how you could have a mini herb garden. So that's quite a good use. That looks very pretty. You can paint up the wagon wheel or leave it as it is. 
and you've got an instant herb garden and that could look really pretty i have done videos different ways you can label plants you can put labels around the edge if you wanted to do that an old ironing board now you see these a lot people just want to get rid of them this is a good fold away planting table so you could either leave it up all the time for plants plant pots and hanging pots or for when you're potting up and you haven't really got much room you could get out your old ironing board and do your potting up on there some of them have a little shelf at the bottom as well some don't but these are things to look out for old bar stools or high kitchen stools those kind of things these are really good for trailing plants so you can put the plant on the top and let them trail down or indeed reverse them and have them for climbing plants and another plant maybe on the top. Hi there, how are you today, KD? Oh, and Danny, you both jumped in together. Are you together today? <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. We're doing a lot of gardening stuff today. So uh, run it back if you want to see some herb stuff prior to this. Um, so I'm talking about now how you can reuse um, or salvage things like old ironing boards and wagon wheels and old bar stools we've done so far. An old chest of drawers or an old filing cabinet. Anything with drawers, you can pull out each drawer a bit further and have plants either growing in them, herbs, or you could have different plant pots climbing up them. So a different drawer pulled out a bit further than the one above it. And that makes a good thing. Make sure it's a sturdy one, obviously. You don't want it falling over. But you can always screw it to a wall or something like this. Yes, I know. Danny loves salvaging things. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, got workaways here. Started working here today and they arrived yesterday. So I'll talk more about those on my Wednesday live and tell you what we've done so far and what I hope to do with them. And I will be doing videos on their time here as well. Um, if you find those mini drawers, you know those where um, people have screws and nails and nuts, or you could use them for makeup, anything with mini drawers in, they actually make good little starting areas so again you can pull the drawers out and start different crops in those again that could be a good mini herb area for that and they're also very good if things need to be kept very moist so any size drawers anything plasticky will really work well we have to be careful with plastic here because it's so intense heat that they will crack up eventually but it's a good short-term solution uh what else just trying to think of some things we might not have thought of basically if it's got a compartment in it in some shape or form even if you have to invert it it makes a brilliant growing area something a little bit different i grow in old backs of toilet cisterns you've probably seen that either to hold my cat food bags in or just to grow straight in although some of them be careful the soil can dry out dependent on whether it's plastic or um, porcelain i guess a lot of them are ceramic so do watch that um, i grow in old tin bars at the moment i have two one i want to totally over hot over haul so i want to dig all one out and start again with that one but the other one's got my asparagus in and peppers. That's what's growing in that one at the moment. The peppers love it. They really do. And we were talking the other day about how I don't have drainage in anything anymore now. So that's something to consider. Uh, I've just mentioned my cat food bags. And, you know, I've upgraded to um, the giant size pet bags that we get from the stables. So that's something. Uh, something else I use a lot is my fly swatters. As I've said, things go brittle here if they're plastic. 
so I don't know if you're newer to my channel and you've seen the actual handles when the swatter bits all broken up the handles I write with um, marker pens that are okay for outdoors and I write what's growing and stick those in the ground so that's a very quick solution sometimes I can't be bothered to write on them and I choose the colour to match what I'm growing <laughs> such as blue hmm what's blue dawn what are you growing that's blue well it's leeks as in water leeks <laughs> sometimes I do crazy things like that the pink ones might be radishes or beetroot this kind of thing green ones obviously something that you're growing green lettuce or something like this I only need them when I start growing because obviously I grow so many things at once I'm like oh what was that bed particularly if I've got my whole line of hoogles or a bed of mixed seeds and obviously want to mark where I've planted certain seeds you must have seen my rabbit cages I grow in those they're very good for new seeds and it stops big bugs going in those and at the moment I've got in those cabbage uh, cauliflower seeds they're all coming up now cabbage cauliflower because that stops the butterfly, uh, the cabbage moth or butterfly going into those. I think I've got spring onions coming up the other side. Did I put radish and beetroot in as well? Possibly. Possibly I'll do some more of those. can't remember if I did or didn't in the end of those. Casserole dishes, um, they're good not only for grinding, but I use them more for the underneath for the kind of drip trays if you like or underneath pots and then I always the next day empty if there's any water left put it back in the top so I don't waste any water uh, baking dishes any old cooking dishes cups uh, I use all sorts of cups I use takeaway cups different types I use egg boxes as you see, my favourite method of germinating seeds when they start is uh, take away the clear sort of take away things that you get. I think Americans get donuts in them, those kind of things, or um, take away foods or cakes, anything like that that has a lid. And I'm a great lover also of uh, the big water bottles, the great big ones that you have in offices in the on the dispenser machines. And I slice them roughly in half. It depends on the shape of them. Not completely cut through. And then I close the lid over when I'm germinating the seeds. And if it gets hot, I can open them up. And some of them I do cut completely in half and use the bottom for growing and the top as cloches, as I do with my milk bottles as well. Uh, any wooden crates they won't last forever but they work pretty well and might make up different crates for me and raise beds out of pallets or pallets which I say many times you can get free either go to ports where they import things or anywhere where it could be big manufacturers where they bring in fridges or import any big items basically or find people that are coming to live in your country and they they pack up the containers around cars and all sorts of things so do check that out they are free but check obviously if they've been treated or anything first the same as I grow in tires but I do check those kind of things out uh, what else if you can't get access to any of these, if your country still has the shopping carrier bags, then you could start growing in those. So that's quite simple. Just make sure they don't leak. There are a few that do leak, even though they look solid. So do check that out as well. Um, and then just recycling in general. Uh, we do things such as I get given reading books. And then I'll recycle them by giving them to my Airbnb guest or my workaway guest. They'll read them. I let them take them home because I always 
uh, don't like to borrow a book if I'm on holiday or anything like this because returning it. So if I've read them, there's a few I keep that I really enjoy to read again. The rest goes. So there's some um, little tips there for you. Oh, my final one, I should say, is paper uh, for gardening because I rewrite on paper. I write on the back of paper. I write on envelopes. Anything I can write on, I reuse. And then I'll shred them and either put them in my compost or in the bottom of the growing bed. Okay, moving on, next section. I call this Nats. Hacks, facts, and stats. And today I thought I'd share some tips with you for cleaning cooking pans or saucepans. I thought I'd share that. I have four tips to share today on that. First one to remove rust from cake tin corners. Scour with a raw potato dipped in your cleaning powder. Second one. Clean your domestic tinware by rubbing powdered washing soda on the surface with a moistened, screwed up ball of newspaper. Do check what the print is. Wash well with warm water. Dry and polish like new with more newspaper. Third one. The bottom of barbecue pots and pans will stay bright if they're rubbed over with a cake of soap before you use them on an open fire. The smoke stains will vanish when washed. And the last one for today. Before using a frying pan, brush with a small amount of oil, add three tablespoons, which is 60 grams, of salt and heat gently for three minutes. With a large pad of kitchen paper or kitchen towel, rub the salt around the pan and then wipe off and this prevents sticking. So I hope that's a tip somewhere there for you. Now the section I quite like is coffee break what to watch. Now I said at the beginning of this I've forgotten to put the link in at the bottom so I will go back and do it. If you go back later and the link's not there just add in the comment door and you haven't done it yet because <laughs> this is a really great one. Um, the channel that I think you would enjoy watching this little quick video of theirs. The channel is Tom Girl City. I'll put it in here just in case I forget, forget to type it, uh, put it in the link. It's Tom Girl City. And the link goes to the video that I'm saying to watch on Coffee Break. And now I can't even remember what that's called. Hold on. Let me just, ooh, can I bring this up? Are you still there? Because I'm on another screen. I've got it down the bottom. Want to rock and roll? You still there? Good. <laughs> it's called Want to Rock and Roll is the video. I've never gone out and back in. <laughs> Want to rock and roll i could put the link there but i'll put it in later and it's a really fun quick video it's a song plays and there's all sorts of funny animation i think um tara's put her own mouth to it i think i think that's how it's done and it's just a real fun video all the different things it starts off with the pizza singing and that is really fun. You want to just watch that. So as I say, it's a quick little video. I always promote something a bit different out there that you can watch while you're having your tea break or your coffee break and just chill out for a short time. So do check that out. Tom Girl City is the channel and the actual video that, that I will put the link in is 
want want to rock and roll and she's done some more since actually but that is one so if you like that do look through her channel to see other similar videos that she does as well so that's a fun one <clears throat> and now the part you're all here for yes it's the joke section <laughs> So it's Monday fun day, guys, but I do do jokes on my Wednesday one as well because everyone loves my jokes. So this is a section I call jokes, quotes, puns and fun. I've got some very different sort of thing coming up on these joke sections soon, so do look out for that. Um, I thought I'd do jokes about the pandemic. <laughs> Excuse me, because there's been some funny ones out there. If you don't like this, just skip ahead until I show the next circle of the next topic. So don't complain. I've given you warning. If you don't like it, skip ahead till you see the next subject circle. Okay. Um, be careful of shopping bags because they are carriers and butter knives are spreaders the virus sticks to your cookware that's why it's called a pandemic cars are also carriers that's why it's called corona virus and why people can be seen wearing masks when they're alone in their cars. So we'll just do some normal jokes now. <laughs> if anyone's jumped, I miss the normals. Two wrongs don't make a right, but three rights make a left. <clears throat> How do you stop dropping toast so the butter side lands on the floor? Just butter it on the other side, of course. Never draw your curtains at night. Much better to sketch them in the daylight. If hanging a crystal from your window brings good energy into your home, will hanging one from your glasses bring you good thoughts to your head? Mirrors can bring bad she, as they encourage you to look back on your life when you should be looking forwards. So, should you remove the rearview mirror in your car? Hmm. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Use an egg box, like everyone else. And last one. A chipped plate is bad she, but a plate of chips is good she. <laughs> Hope you like those. And on to my next section. I call this past times, past times. Past times, past times. And this has become quite a little popular section. So I thought I'd carry on on the same theme with this for a little while. And this is talking about Barbie dolls. And the equivalent in England was called Cindy dolls. Now, where Barbie was very thin and protruding in certain areas, the Cindy doll was a more of a realistic shape all over. So... Children could identify more with it, and the clothes were what you would buy, whereas um, Barbie was a bit more out there, and she had every different occupation under the sun, basically. <laughs> I think she must have been a bit spoiled and could do whatever she wanted to. <laughs> so Cindy doll was the similar doll, if you like, the, a teenage doll. And in England, it was the first type of doll, I believe, that wasn't like a baby doll. 
as in all dolls were sort of baby dolls or that kind of look. And as you know, the size of Barbie, Cindy was a similar size. And I believe it was the first of that type of doll. So a little bit about Cindy doll. And that's Cindy with an S. Cindy doll was created by Pedigree Dolls and Toys in September 1963. It was the best-selling toy in the UK in both 1968 and 1970. Before production, girls were asked to pick a name for the doll. Cindy, with a C, was the most popular choice, but it was changed to Cindy with an S for trade marketing. Then there was another toy brought in, which was her boyfriend called Paul. I had Paul and Cindy. Paul was launched in 1965, and then they brought out um, her sister, Cindy's sister, Patch, and she was a bit smaller. I had Patch as well. And Patch was brought out in 1966. 70% of turnover was on the sale of the accessories. And my goodness, I had loads of clothes for them. And I didn't have anything else for Patch. I don't know if the extra clothes hadn't come out. I just didn't have them. But Cindy, I had lots of clothes for. Paul, I've spoken about this before. I don't know what the situation was, whether not many were made, because they didn't last very long. But my mum was trying to get um, Paul for me and my sister for Christmas. And she went somewhere and they had them, but they were mutants. That's not the word I want. Uh, what do you call it when there's something a bit wrong with them all? They did pass production. There was a fault. Now, I don't understand how this is by what was wrong with them. My one had one leg was correct. They were like hard, hard plastic, but really hard, not rubbery. And the other leg was much longer and really rubbery so it wasn't like a fault as in something had gone wrong it was like parts were missing and mutant they put other parts on i don't really understand what that was about my sister's one was all correct but the actual hand which was joined it wasn't like a twisty hand or i think it was part of the arm but the hand of one of its arms was back to front but as I say, it wasn't a separate piece. I wonder if she's got any pictures on it. But that's the bizarre thing. So it didn't get twisted. There wasn't any malfunctioning, the manufacturer of it, that you could see it had got twisted round. So hers was okay, really. But my one, when you put shoes on my pool, you couldn't put shoes on this long rubber leg because... <laughs> The leg, the foot was much bigger as well. I mean, the leg was about this much longer. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. Nice to see you. I hope you got my message because I've got volunteers here for some time at the moment. I'm not going on anyone's channels. I'm probably not even replying to messages. I'm just doing my post and my lives. So I look forward to coming back. I felt weird today that I wasn't on yours and other people's channels I go on on the Monday so I haven't seen anybody's if you've got any gossip for me <laughs> jot it down there but I will be back I think they're here for about two and a half weeks so yeah <laughs> oh dear um and are you doing expo every year I want to know not that I can come but I loved it I really loved all the whole concept of that yes yeah, so that was Paul ah great I I don't think a lot of people look at community posts because that's worth it for everyone to see I didn't really have time to make a video so great yeah I hope my mods are spreading the word as well so yeah I will be back <laughs> haven't got my seeds yet but not expecting them so don't worry I will tell you when I've got them so don't worry there yeah so Paul was a bit of an issue. 
every year. Yeah, you'll want to go on Black Tropical Homestead and find out what this expo is all about. It's wonderful. And the uh, Savannah community, amazing, amazing. Loved it. Um, yeah, so Paul was a bit of an issue. As I say, Patch, I didn't have clothes for. I had the car, the Cindy car. I've forgotten what type of car it is. I don't think I've got any pictures of it. I had the double bed. I had the wardrobe. I didn't have kitchen units, but my mum had got cheap doll kitchen units and that. So I had a kitchen. Didn't have any lounge stuff. Oh, I had the dining table and chairs. But the chair legs and the table legs were, I don't know what sort of plastic it was. It was like brittle. And you only had to slightly lean on something and they snapped off. I don't know what sort of is it plastic, but really like brittle stuff. They just snapped like hard plastic. So they didn't last very long. But yeah, that was cool. And um, my mum got some toy bunk beds from somewhere. So Patch had that. And then I had Amanda Jane was a doll that came in, like a small doll, and I had lots of clothes for her. So she became, Cindy and Paul got married. Patch was their daughter in my game. Amanda Jane was the daughter. And then I had another little baby doll. Oh, what was she called? Teeny Weenie. It wasn't Tiny Tears or Teeny Tiny Tears. Oh, I forget what that doll was called, but it had a proper name. Anyway, so that was that was my little family. I played with those, those my Cindy doll and my doll's house was probably the things I played with most. I wasn't into baby dolls and all that, not not at all really. I would say they were the two toys. I still have my doll's house, but I did sell my Cindy's off. And um, funny enough, me and Mike watch a program um, where it's about toy auctions. And we saw an episode and they're saying the Cindy doll that I had sold for, I think it was £200. And I had all the accessories and that. I sold it all before I came here because it wasn't in. It had been played with, well played with. It wasn't disastrous, but that's that. So my next section I call this section, let's look at a book I took from my book Nook. Let's look at a book I took from my book Nook. And this ties in with the next section I also want to do today. Blast from the past. <laughs> because the book from my bookshelf of books that aren't storybooks, which is what I share on the Monday and on the Wednesday I share what I'm actually reading. This is Mike's book, actually. So I don't really know it very well. I haven't had a good look. Masters of Victorian Photography, because he was into photography. And I was just quickly flicking through before I came on. And I thought this would be very interesting to show you, this picture from it. And it's a ship. And it says HMS Cambridge. Great gun practice, like firing the cannons. And it's saying that the picture was by George Washington Wilson. And the smoke in the picture surprised the print buying public who had never seen action frozen by a camera before. So let's bring it up close. So that was a really astounding picture in those days, in Victorian times, that they actually had captured, if you like, a steal of action of the smoke. So that's got to be quite a historical picture, I would say, that one. Oh, did I show you who it's by? Yes, John Hatt. John Hannaby, 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 Hannaby. So in case you want to look it up, I'm pretty sure you can go to any library and if they don't have an old book, you can order an old book. So if there's anything I show you, I'm pretty sure you can 
order them if it's of interest. Mike's very much into old cameras. He's got a little collection. Oh, you're back. Hi there. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> We're talking about old photos. This is a Victorian photo book. I just love things. Um, I really wish, though, in old photos, people would write who they are and just a little bit. So if you've got old photos, serve your family, do go and write down who they are. I know a lot of people have got really old family photos, but they haven't even got a clue who they are, which I think is quite sad. Those people just sort of melt away, which is why on my other tra channel, Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty, I'm actually reading my nan's autobiography in short parts. So I've just done part two because she wrote her story, Little Snippets, and she was born in 1908, I think. It says it in the title, what year she was born. Oh, that's like negative, showing like the negatives. There. So I'm sure there's a very interesting thing about how photos were done. Probably a great read, actually. As you know, Dawn loves learning, so I will have a good look at this. I love old buildings. As I said before, I would like to be in maybe Edwardian times, but not the poor street urchin. That's quite a good picture. Two pictures. Setting up their cameras. No boats, ships. Yeah. I mean, just the pictures. I mean, he's quite happy for a professional picture, isn't he? Because they didn't used to let them smile. And one of the reasons they didn't let them smile was because, as you know, the frames took, I've probably got the terminology wrong, but the shutter speed took so long that if they were smiling and they couldn't hold their smile anymore, that that would disrupt the photo, which is the reason why they didn't let people smile. And the men wouldn't have smiled anyway because they wanted to be, um, what do you call it? You know, <laughs> you know. Uh, Ashley says, my mum would write on the back of photos who, where and the date. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. I haven't got many old photos. I've got one of my great grandma, my mum's nan. Um, that's no, I've got two of her. I know because I've put them in the uh, where I'm reading the autobiography. Um, I've only got a couple. I think I've got one of my mum as a baby. There's not really any pictures of my dad at all. Oh, look at these. That hat. I wonder what people were thinking, sort of, as much time passed again, of, like, people of today. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the future? Oh, wow, look at this one. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness, he's holding something. What does that say? Oh, I can't read it, it's white on black. One of the many portraits of church dignitaries. What's that? Mm, I can't read the date. Numbers all just blur together. Uh, I'm not sure of the date. I can't really see. I don't know if you can see it's here by my finger. I don't know if it's clear for you. I really have trouble with white on black. <laughs> I can't even read the number on now um, Mike's mobile phone. He said, oh, can you read this number out to me so I can type it in on something else? Uh, like, I don't know. I was like, mm. is it a three? Is it an eight? <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, I thought that would be of interest. I like the streets, as you know. 
I talk a lot about old shops and old times. I think it's my age. <laughs> ah, just so it'll be interesting. Certainly different things on my channel. <laughs> As I say, on a Monday I share books that aren't story books or novels. And then on, uh, or oh, like this, you have to go back to, uh, if anyone knows these places, I'll tell you where they are in a minute. Uh, top one's Coventry and the bottom one's Anglesey. Well, that's probably similar. Probably all buildings nearby now. I like on YouTube, sometimes people show you a shot of how it was and then a shot it sort of blends into how it is today. Um, I like that. And I also like um, a friend of mine, he does on YouTube film locations. And obviously they put things in like fountains and fences that aren't really there. And then he shows you what it's really like. A lot of locations you just wouldn't even recognise. Oh, don't be scared. It's a bit like Ebenezer Scrooge. Who's he? So John Herschel. Hmm. And Oh dear, look at her eyes. I don't know what she's trying to portray there exactly. <laughs> yeah, her eyes are really weird. Yeah, so I just thought I'd share a bit of that for you. A bit of interest. A bit of old times. See if there's anything really overly interesting. Mm. Suspension bridge angle, say. Just in case anyone knows it, wants to say. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a typical look, isn't it? It's a typical look. Yeah, so I thought you might like that. And going on to my section I haven't done for a while. It's all Greek to me because we speak Cypriot. <laughs> this is the Cyprus flag. This is the Greek flag. But obviously a lot of Greek is spoken here, particularly in the tourist areas. But if you go in the remote areas, you will find Cypriot is spoken and not Greek at all. So I've got to be quite multilingual in that respect as well. So I thought today you might like to know some of the words for vegetables in Greek. And I actually find this very useful anyway, because when I have people from other countries, if I say this is a pomegranate tree, for example, and they're like, oh, you don't understand pomegranate. If I say it in Greek, sometimes and quite often, the Greek is nearer to the word that they know of what they would say in their language. And that's because obviously a lot of um, biology and plants and these kinds of things come stem from the Greek or the Latin names. I thought you might like to hear what some of these words are. Um, Just trying to put it so I can read the list. I must get my eyes checked. So we'll start with cucumber and guri. And guri for cucumber. If you speak any other languages and it's similar to another language you know, do let me know. Um, I'm having trouble reading. <laughs> I can't even see what the English says. Uh, I'll just stick with the Greek, I think, and then translate. Artichokes. Um, I'm just wondering if I could put the light on. It might help me a little bit. I'll just switch. There, that might help. Can you see me better? Can you see me? There we go. John can read again. <laughs> Is that better? 
Okay, where were we? Artichokes. Anginares. Anginares. Peas. Arakas. Carrots. Garota. Zucchinis or courgettes. Calocythia. Cauliflower. Kunupiti, Kunupiti, Kunupiti. Um, onions. Chromesia, Chromesia. Cabbage, which is quite close to the word for vegetable itself, is Lahano, Lahano. And obviously, red cabbage is Gokino, as in red. La Hano. Mushrooms, Mantihari or Mantiharia. Lettuce, Maruli. Eggplant or Aubergine, Melitzanes. Okra or we say ladies' fingers. Um, don't know that one. Let me see. Is that? I'll have to look because I don't know that one. Banias, I think that is. Banias, I can't see it. Banias. Tomatoes, tomates. Potatoes, potates. Peppers, piperes, piperes. Uh, leeks, brassa, I wouldn't count that as a vegetable, I wouldn't count that as a vegetable, asparagus, sparagia, uh, spinach, I can't speak English either, spinach, spanaki, uh, one more, let's do lentils, fakes, fakes. Yes, I did actually know what okra was, so that was quite interesting. Ashley, it was a little dark. That's better. Just clean my specs for nothing. <laughs> I normally do put the light on. I put the room light on normally, actually. So, yes, if you're still on, tell me what you're up to, what your channel's doing, something where people look back later, they will come along to your channel and what you're up to or if you need anything help from anyone or just tell me what you're doing today because I've got a headache <laughs> I think I was trying to read I never know if it's my eyes or my brain who knows who cares <laughs> oh dear so, yes, as I say, we've got the volunteers here now. I will talk about that on Wednesday for sure. I'll tell you what we've been doing. I did the first bit of filming today of what we've been doing. I'm thinking about doing it a bit different. Every time I get work away, as I format a little bit different the video of their time here. I always do an interview, so I've got to try and remember to do an interview with them before they go. But then I do another video of work they do. Sometimes I integrate that into questions. Sometimes I just show what they've done. And I think I might do this like a diary. <laughs> Actually, it's a lot of diary. <laughs> Volunteer diary. And just do Monday and show a little bit of what we did today. And Tuesday, Wednesday. I might do that, I think. Make that a little bit different. So lots of short, sharp snippets. I think that will be fun. And if you watch my channel a lot, you'll probably know what we've done first. Hmm, any guesses, anyone? Hmm, can anyone guess what we did first? What we've been doing today? We all did it together. Mike didn't. He was doing another project. But that was good because it freed Mike up to do something else. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they're originally from Latvia. Really nice couple. 
they might drop in the live on Wednesday, possibly. So uh, they're out today, but they might do that. Um, Ashley says, I'm having problems germinating carrot seeds. Three different attempts, no show. Oh, carrot's not normally a problem. Hmm. I just throw them in the ground normally. They'll bunch up, but I tell you what I've had trouble with this time. Well, not this time because some are growing okay. But I did one hoogle bed and I just uh, put loads. It's quite a big square one. And I put loads of uh, cabbage seed down and lettuce because I'm running out of lettuce. All gone. Nothing's come up. Apart from one lettuce and it's a quite a big square one it's all composty and leaves and really nice sort of mushy bed and none of them come up but I've grown started the cauliflower and the cabbage in the in little cups and little pots in the rabbit cage and they're all whoo here we all are so I'm guessing ants is a, a possibility Ashley that ants got those seeds because they like the finer seeds I have seen before, like all the ants walking away. I'm like, Where, where's all this cabbage gone? I put loads of seeds down. And you see a little line of ants. <laughs> ah, free handy maids here. Hello there. Hanging out in the ads at the moment. Oh, what ads do you get there? I don't get any ads and I don't pay for no ads. I don't know what ads they put on. I've talked about this before. I've got no idea. And everyone will get different ads. So very interesting what sort of ads you get. I haven't got the control button. I looked when I first uh, was being um, monetized. I won't go through that situation again. And that actual button was not there. And I asked them where the button was so I can control ads. Not there. And when I say not there, they still oh, it's in this section. And I was like, yeah, I know where it is. You've got, I can't remember what other titles there is, but there's a title, then that one, then another title, another title. That doesn't sort of bits you can go on. And that was like blank. So I was like, no, it's not there. So I have no control. I'm a bit cross about that because there's certain sorts of videos I don't want. And if you don't know, not only can you say you don't want certain types of adverts, let's say gambling, you can even go right down to a company. So let's say holidays, you don't want anything to do with one particular holiday company. So you can blank that out, but keep all others if you've had a problem with something. So that's pretty cool. Don't mind watching ads if I know the channel I'm supporting is going to get some revenue. Yeah, you have to go back on my last two, three lives because I've gone into that. I'm getting something now. Um, luckily, I've got a video coming up of what I got out of my first money, what I bought myself. And luckily, it was in a sale because it was 70 something euro. And they told me that's what I've made because in Cyprus you have to have 70 euro or more to get money. And I've got 70 something, just over 70. And I was like, whoopie do. Ordered it because it was in the sale. Luckily in the sale it was reduced to 30 something. So I'm like, I've got to order it now. So I ordered it and luckily it was in the sale because when the money actually comes through, um, they've taxed me. American tax, that's a long saga, I don't know why, but anyway, and they've taken a huge chunk of it, so I only just luckily managed to pay for uh, what I'd bought, or I would have gone in debt through it, and I'm not someone who normally buys in advance, but as I say, it was so reduced, luckily, <laughs> so when you see what I've bought, I've got a video coming up, what I've bought, um, when you see it, if you've watched an ad at some point, you help me buy it. So I'm so grateful for anyone that does. You can dream of being monetized. I, I don't really know how I got monetized so fast. And I had to fight for it, remember, because Cyprus wasn't monetized at all. No one in Cyprus could be monetized, and I fought for that. So I kind of really feel I, I've 
um, the little bit I got. So, um, yeah, I didn't do lives prior to that. Um, I've more often than not, I've got short videos, not shorts, I'm quite anti shorts. Um, more often than not, short videos. So, a lot of them don't make money anyway because they're too short. Uh, if anyone wants to know anything about monetization or what you need to do and blah blah, I can tell you. I was just lucky that all my three channels, I've got videos that went well over 1k, and that's how I got the hours basically really quickly. So, that and subscribers, although once you're monetized, YouTube does suddenly start drawing, knocking down your. Um, subscriber number is fact because they want you to then not go oh monetize now sit back they want you to go oh my goodness I'm going to go under the 1k I need to drum up more trade because they want you to actually get more subscribers to watch more adverts so you will see channels that break that 1k suddenly start going back down again so if you're not subscribed do hit that subscribe button <laughs> Uh, yeah, because if you are monetized and you go back to 1K or less, you're not monetized again and you have to reapply to be monetized. I know all about it. <laughs> Anything you need to know, do ask me because I've been inside the depths of YouTube. Uh, Freehandly says, I've chosen not to monetize. It depends on each of us what our goals are. So for channels I follow and if I know they're monetized, I always let them have fun. Thanks very much for that. The reason I did was twofold. One, because, as I said, they didn't allow Cyprus to be monetized. And I'm someone who likes fair play. So because I wanted to fight for Cyprus, after all that effort to not be monetized would be a bit stupid, really. And the second reason is because when... Um, you're at the level, actually prior to the level of being monetized, they do put ads on your channel even if you say you don't want to be monetized. So they're going to run ads anyway, so why let them just take all the money and some people don't like watching ads and get upset with channels and leave. So if they're going to leave anyway and you're not getting any money for it, that was my other reason that they're going to run the ads anyway which they were doing before I sorted out Cyprus being monetized so I thought well, if they're taking the money and you are going to get people to leave your channel and we just use a free ad blocker so sorry if you do have adverts but my laptop is so slow that if I ran ads I'd never get to watch anything so we have a free ad blocker just for that fact that by the time that's loaded and if I'm on people's lives it stops and starts and all sorts going on but yeah if you watch the ads thanks very much and I apologize if there's any ads that aren't nice but then you have to go and complain to YouTube because I can't do anything about it I can't do it uh yeah you've said that before Ashley most popular video of 2,000 views of my dog yeah my um ones are goats um animals basically animals do best from people and videos that i just throw something up there old oh, people might like to see this and my other channel tranquility through life's natural beauty um about three videos back possibly two or three videos back i was down at the stables where i help out and I thought, oh, people might like to see all the different animals he's got here, apart from horses. So there's a bit of budgery guards, and I think the rabbits were in that one. I'm not sure, because he changed his animals sometimes. But the goats in that one, he had two little miniature goats, um, chickens, hens. He's got a turkey. Uh, what else has he got? Guinea pigs. So I just put the title something about, if you like, and I put all the animals Boom, goats, horse, all the thing. And that got 4.4K in a few days. And that took no time at all. I slightly edited it because obviously my camera is a bit weird. So it goes in and out of focus and does funny things. But I didn't spend time on it. I just literally came home, 
chopped out the bits or if, if there was background noise, I think I took that out and put music on possibly. And 4.4K. <laughs> <laughs> but then another video I might take time because I do like creating and editing and all that and I might take time and you know then yeah, no one watches which is fine but yeah it's weird I have to go scrub up now oh yeah you're doing your operation aren't you best of luck <laughs> yeah as I say I think your carrots might be ants that's all I can say I can only say ants have taken the seeds for none to come up and for them all to be gone. Yeah, I'm going to say ants, Ashley. Sorry about that, matey. And I hope you got my message that I'm not on anyone's channels for, I think it's two and a half weeks or something. My volunteers are here because obviously I still want to post. I still want to do my lives and I do have to. Um, make sure I socialise with them and work with them and so when they're not working obviously socialising and that so I've only really got time to post and do my lives so I will catch up with everyone so do drop in the comments below something about your channel what you're doing and keep me up to date and then I'll come back and obviously watch that but whereas I normally say I'll come and watch all your channels if you're in live I can't for the next couple of weeks so we'll see who comes on and who doesn't. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, yeah, so um, as I say, I'll catch everyone up on my live on Wednesday. As to That's more my chit-chat one normally, really. And I'll tell you what's happening with the work wires and any projects coming up. Uh, if there's anything you want to know, now's a great time to ask me before I disappear. What time is it now? uh 6:42 yeah i wasn't feeling very well just before i came on actually i might still be all right if you like i said yeah once i get going i'll, I'll probably be great so don't want to overdo it it's because i knew what job i was going to be doing with the work always today and i was a little bit worried about doing it you'll see when you see the filming of it i was like am i okay for doing that and uh I, I think I just got a bit churny, but yeah, it wasn't in the heat long or anything like that. It's very hot here at the moment, so I have to be careful with them that they're not working out in the heat. So they start a job, do it for a little bit, and then they were actually doing something else with me, uh, or they did in the cold sitting on the patio, another little job. So, yes, thank you all very much for joining me. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, you have been my lifeline through all the pandemic and everything because, as you may well know, that mask until last week, um, it was the beginning of this month, actually, masks don't have to be worn everywhere now. So, although I could have gone out places outdoors, Obviously, if we drove somewhere, because there's nothing around to go to, if we drove somewhere and I needed to use a toilet, I couldn't go in a, a public building. So I couldn't go, I couldn't go in shops and everything that. But I can go out. <laughs> you have an awesome day too, my friends. So glad to see you here. I really appreciate everybody who comes on. So I may well be going out at some point. As I say, I've got to be very careful. Because uh, I'm highly vulnerable and tourists are now here. So this is what happens in Cyprus. Every time the tourists come, we get numbers again. And then tourists go, all gets cancelled out and then we have to start again. But I hope to go out. I have got a film coming up. I filmed a tiny bit long time ago, three years ago, when we last went to our capital city. And I thought, I'm going to edit that. And it's only photographs because I didn't have a camera that filmed, like a um, video camera. So I'm going to put that up at some point soon. And it's just one street of our capital city. And I thought that would be a bit of a change from my gardening and other stuff going on. But hopefully soon there will be some more out and about videos. So thank you all very much for being here. Have a wonderful day 
and I'll see you on my live on Wednesday. But in the meantime, look out for more of my videos. Thanks for being in my community.